Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Downs Your Way. I'm Colin Speller and I'm delighted to say that I have the lady herself with me today, Rebecca Downs. Hello. Hello, good to see you. Thank you. Today's subject is independent music and how to support it. Now, we get lots of questions from fans about how they can help us by supporting and promoting our music. Mm-hmm. And we see lots of debate on this subject on social media. So we thought we would share our thoughts in today's discussion. So before we do that, just a few opening remarks. First of all, this isn't just all about us, although obviously we would like you to help <laughs> and support us. Um, we think that what we're about to say applies to any independent act. Uh, secondly, I think it's important to point out that we've got no special insight or wisdom. These are our thoughts based on our knowledge and experience of what is basically a chaotic, rapidly changing industry. Mm-hmm. So we might not be right. Uh, we might be right today and wrong tomorrow. Uh, but we will try and present some evidence to support the things we're saying. Mm-hmm. And finally, by way of intro, as ever, we would welcome your thoughts and inputs by way of email, comments or social media. Uh, especially if you've got any ideas. Absolutely. And by the way, if you can hear a chomping in the background, it's um, obviously the dog Ralph chewing his dentist stick. Yes. So I'm sorry about that. Dog, anyway. of, dog of the podcast this week is, is Ralph. Ralph, Ralph Stewart Downs, Ralph. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Um, so we're going to break this down into sections. And I think we'd like to start with everyone's favourite modern day monster, social media. Ah! Um, so... If we look at what we do, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I think we, we'd start with the band page, wouldn't we, and, and how yeah. that works. Yeah. And, and I think recent experiences that Facebook is doing its damnedest to make sure that anything you put organically on the Facebook page basically doesn't get out to anybody unless you pay them. No, it's the official band page we're talking about here, so the one with the blue tick. So basically, whenever I, that's Ralph drinking in the background... It is water, not whiskey. Um, so basically, whenever I put a post on the band page or Colin does... Ralph, is that... He's really thirsty. Um, <laughs> Facebook will basically have algorithms in place to try and stop that post organically spreading. Because they really want the owners of the pages, like ourselves, to pay to boost posts. Now, we won't... I don't think right now get into the machinations of boosting and sponsoring, which is, as we've been told, for Facebook tourists. Because <laughs> um, it's kind of like a, a... I kind of just get a few more likes from people sort of thing. So really, the first thing is, if you see a post on the band page, if you can share it, obviously, Facebook algorithms won't apply to you, won't apply to personal accounts. So if you can share it, that's absolutely great. Yeah, because what it what it confers is what they the, the, the specialists like to call social proof. Mm. Because it says here is an individual standing behind this statement. It's not just someone promoting something. It's not someone advertising mm. it. So if you feel able to and you know agree with the sentiment or agree with the music we're promoting or whatever, sticking it on your own page and 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 pushing mm. it out that way is 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 fantastic. So shares are really very very important. They are. Um, and people talk about post engagement, and that's basically commenting, liking, sharing. So you know if you've got a load of sort of paid for bots. Uh, to push your likes up, you know, it it won't show on individual posts unless you sponsor them because obviously a lot of those um, bots are, you know, they're not human, they can't respond. So people are kind of, you know, they're looking for, well, anyone, you know, agents, festivals, are looking for people that are sharing, interacting with the posts. And also, it is a great way of sharing your love of the music and sort of saying, you know, spreading the word, as it were, word of mouth, uh, the word of social media in your mouth is, that sounds weird, in your mouth, but anyway, you know what I <laughs> we mean. We know what you mean. We I'm mean. from Wolverhampton, we can't, you know, I just, I'm too blonde. We can't articulate. I don't know any big words. <laughs> um, so, it just means that you endorse it, and it is a great way of just spreading the word and getting the name out there. And it's something that you can do relatively easily if you want to, and we really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, it's all moved on. I, I, people, understandably, I think, have been wanting to 
uh, represent themselves as positively as possible, shall we say. Mm. So there is, I think, a fair degree of evidence in the past, and we've talked about this before on here, where people have gone out and specifically boosted their social media following. And you know there's quite a lot of debate about that going on, particularly in the world of Instagram. Uh, but it's happened on Facebook as well. Twitter. Uh, Twitter. You can usually tell, uh, as Rebecca says, by the kind of volume of engagement. Uh, you know, I've looked into this and the kind of levels that we're getting are, are pretty good, really, uh, as a percentage of the total. And we've had that sort of endorsed by outside sort of social media experts, which was nice. Which was nice. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it's a good indicator if you're seeing someone who's got, you know, tens of thousands of followers and they're only getting like 20 or 30 likes on their page, then the chances are... On their posts. On their posts, sorry. Then the chances are that that's... Um, you know, there's a, there's a fair degree. There's of, a disconnect. There's a there? disconnect, shall we say? And I think it's important that authenticity is becoming a bigger and bigger issue in mm. this whole area. Because, for example, from our point of view, I mean, we've got just over nine thousand likes on the page. We'd like to think, we'd like to believe that they are all genuine. Because basically, we want to be talking to those people. And as Rebecca's mm. already said. You know, if they're not genuine... Um, you then can't you're, speak to them. Well, you're deluding <laughs> yourself. And what, what's more, you can end up paying money to try and talk to them, which is mm, even worse. Mm. Because, and they're not going to, you know, react as she they're said. They're not going to come to a gig. They're not going to buy your music. They're not going to listen to your music. So from my point of view, what's the bloody point? So we haven't done it. And it's even slightly <laughs> worse than that because, you know, we've paid for advertising on Facebook and it's very effective. Uh, mm. as, as they say in the books, see the local political scene mm. for all of the debate on there. All they're really talking about there is the same sort of thing that's available to anybody who's mm. got something on Facebook that they can advertise. But um, again, it, the Facebook algorithm looks at the quality of the of the likes you've got, looks at the quality of the engagement, and 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 works in a way to try and refine what it's doing based on that. So it's important that authenticity sits there. But yeah, anything you can do to push out, and as I said earlier, we're not just talking about us. If you support other bands or other causes, the same mm-hmm. applies. Anything that you can pick up and share personally. If you feel strongly enough about it to do that, and that's obviously very important, you, you, you know, will help considerably mm. as as opposed to considerably, the bear. Considerably, yeah. considerably, and that applies Instagram, Twitter, the, the whole, whole the, the whole, whole gambit. It's um, you know, um, sharing music on Spotify, all you know, adding. We'll, 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 we'll come get back, to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, we've got separate up. headings. Oh, <laughs> separate heading, <laughs> heading eh? Um, so I, I suppose that probably covers most of it actually on the old social media front, doesn't it? Um, mm. I suppose the only other thing to say is that uh, the more people we can strong arm into joining the friends of our yeah. family group as well, because again, that uh, that separates out mm. uh, a sort of different layer of support, if you like, that we can communicate and to I, in a different and way. And I know I've seen you know other fan groups operate and they kind of just add random people to the groups you know and 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 I don't want to do that I only want people I think it's important that the groupies people that are on there are really interested in the music so I'm not just going to boost the amount of people that are in the group by kind of adding everyone on my friends list you know um because I just don't think that's the point um I think the point of the friends group is is really really important and it's a way of me being able to communicate directly with the people that come mostly to the gigs and really, you know, are hardcore fans and consumers of what we do and the music that we deliver. And that, to me, is the most important thing. So, yeah, obviously, share the group link if you want to, see if people are interested. But I definitely wouldn't strong on people into sort of, you know, force them to join groups because they just don't follow them anyway, so there's no real point. Yeah. No, but I think if we can, you know, that just spreading the word mm. on that. And Spread how, the word. And how much fun it is, after all. Is it? Well, you know, you get, you know, and I I definitely make an effort to communicate directly with you all on the fan group because I think that's really important. And that, to be honest, in my opinion, is what it's there for. Moving on from social media, we've done it almost every podcast. We've sort of said, join our email list, join our email list. And there's a very good reason, or two very good Mm. reasons for that. I mean, number one, again, it means we can specifically talk to people who have an interest in this um, and maybe send them different messaging to the sort of, you know, rather 
wider targeted stuff we put out on the Facebook page. But also, as we've mentioned before, it, these platforms, I mean, it's not as if they're not in the public eye all the time, is it? And mm. being questioned you know, to the back teeth about the way they operate and what they're doing. It isn't beyond the realms of possibility that at some point somebody's going to step in and mm. shut down Facebook or shut down Twitter, albeit temporarily, while they sort out their yeah. latest, um, you know, cash for cash for promoting uh, uh, populist views mm. <laughs> sort mm. of scandal. Um, an email address is real. It's a real person on the end of it, you, you, you hope. Uh, it's a good way, it's a fantastic way of talking to people specifically. We put out an email a month, uh, maybe just occasionally there might be a second one if there's some mm. particular message we want to put out, so we're not going to fill your inbox up. And I think most bands are in that kind of area of about an email yeah. a month or an email every two or three months. So it's not like you're going to disappear under a tide. And that is an absolutely great way because you know then that, uh, again, going back to like the Facebook page, we might put something out on the Facebook page. You might not get to see it. Mm. It might be something that was of interest to you. If you're on the email list, most of the things that will interest you, new releases, new gigs, mm. new merchandise, you will get notification of. So yeah. it's a good the best way probably of all the ways to keep in touch with us or any other band that you follow yeah absolutely which brings me around actually neatly to the subject of albums and merchandise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do we say about albums and merchandise I'm sitting next to somebody who really loves seeing her album in HMV oh um, my god I love it I can't help it it's because I was a kid and you go into HMV with you know um, your tiny amount of money from Christmas and you know I'd spend hours in there debating inwardly with myself what albums I could get for the maximum out of my £10 voucher or you know it was just and to, to see your own name in there is like oh my god I can't even explain it it's just like the best thing ever but the management yeah has a different view yeah, has a different <laughs> view because to put it bluntly if we sell you an album on the website or at a gig, uh, we net out 10 quid because obviously there are 10 at a gig and I just hand them over and you buy them. Up. If I sell them on the website, they've got to go for about 12 quid to cover the postage and packing and the credit card fees and the what have you. But we get a tenner. It, an album sold through HMV, Amazon, even your local record shop, dare I say it, because I know a lot of you are very passionate about your local record shops brings us about £4.80 uh, and that's a lot of difference really mm. I mean it's important for us it's important for any band all bands will try and get mm. their stuff out into Amazon onto Amazon out onto the record shops mm. out into HMV because these are traditional places where people operate people have accounts set up they yeah. just and they trust that. them and, and they it's trust like them. their yeah. way to buy and sometimes the parishes are even cheaper because they, yeah. they, they flex the price you know you can pay uh, a sort of premium price particularly for an album that's perhaps in the back catalogue and not selling particularly well but they'll sometimes come in and completely randomly stimulate some sales by dropping the price to below a tenner even mm. with postage and packing which is uh, it, it, and, I, and I can tell you in those circumstances it isn't them who takes mm. the pay cut mm. that's pushed back down the line it as well does. but it's just it's just a simple thing I mean we'd love you to buy the music we'd love you to take that, that CD away but if if you have the choice, you've got the time, then defo from us rather than from a. And you can get outlet. it signed, which is always good, with a message of your choice. Yes, and we do have some. We have lots of messages of choice, don't we? That we, we do. Non-rude, that's okay with me. <laughs> so yes, that's an absolutely vital point. And again, that would apply to most other bands that you mm. follow as well. They would also welcome purchasing direct. I'm, absolutely. I'm sure. So we've got you on the. We've got you on the Facebook, we've, we've got you sharing stuff, we've got you on the email list, we've got you buying the stuff direct from us. We now come on to possibly the most controversial part of, of this, this package, and, and that's the whole subject of streaming. And mm. I've seen people absolutely let rip on this on social media, mm. uh, including some of our fans who may mm. be listening into this, who absolutely loathe the whole idea of streaming and they and they rant about it at great length and not without justification i'm mm. bound to say a lot of the points that are made in those discussions very are valid valid points. yeah very valid points indeed 
the problem for us and for every artist is that there's a there's a big shift towards streaming mm. um, and it's also going back to this whole metrics thing the, the way that your streaming numbers are, are, are sort of now in the pot of kind of those things used by casual onlookers to sort mm. of determine the weight your of your wealth. act. Yes, your, the weight mm. of your act. So things like uh, Spotify monthly listeners, etc., et are, are picked up on mm. quite quickly. Um, the the problem that there is, and I say this with some trepidation because I don't want lawyers phoning in <laughs> afterwards, mm. is that again I think streaming has become. There's quite a lot of evidence now that streaming has become the new sort of payola. If you think of back to the scandal of the 60s and 70s where there was a lot of money changing hands to promote records and get them high up the charts, uh, this has now become the latest manifestation. And of by record companies as well. Well, it, it, by, by everybody. And the, pro the problem, I think, the challenge for a lot of people is that you, you, you struggle to promote your music on these media mm. without falling into this mm. trap of people effectively almost like a closed loop where you mm. pay to promote to playlists those those playlists are sort of self-generating enterprises in their own right uh, that kind of you know create some momentum taking money from people wishing to have their music promoted on there putting their music on there uh, effectively paying for people to listen to it uh, and and it's 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 like a sort of self-generating world mm. Um, but it is it's it's important uh, I think let's let's talk about the ideal the ideal and I say this with as I said mm. trepidation because I can almost hear certain I won't name names but there's one character in particular I can think of who reads I know is a great follower of ours and has written about this with great passion but not only ideally would an independent act want you to buy the CD they'd also want you to stream it Absolutely, and pretty. I mean, I, I think the thing is to say whether you like it or you don't like it, it's here to stay. Maybe not on Spotify. I know they've lost money this year. Maybe it'll be Amazon Music that takes form. Maybe it'll be Apple Music that comes to the form. Maybe it'll be something else that's not even existed yet. But I mean, I consume music in just about every way possible. I have to say, and one of them is streaming. You know, but I've got, I would say, pretty much every album that I stream. Um, and that's the way that I kind of, if I'm down in the gym, it's on my phone. It's, you know, it's different, you know, and it's easier to stream it. Um, I think the thing is, yeah, we, we would love you to do that. Obviously, we're trying to keep it real and we're trying to keep it, you know, we're not going to go out and buy... 10,000 plays for the new single from a load of bots because again I don't see the point just going to be honest I know it's vanity and you know and I know there's desperation and I totally understand both of those very very well because as an artist you, you, you do of course you want every song to be streamed more than you know this and that and the other but at the end of the day if those aren't real people I just don't see the point so we're not going to do it Obviously, we'll try and promote them to go on playlists, etc., that we deem as real. But even then, we've got very little control. But we definitely won't go out and buy, you know, bot plays for, you know, 50 quid or something. I, I think that, the, again, this is another area where there's layers to it. So we talked earlier about, like, likes on Facebook mm. and then engagement that follows. And it's, it's similarly with streaming. A lot, of, a lot of streaming is consumed as background music. Yeah. So, and somebody made a very interesting point to me the other day, which I, I, has really sort of hit home because I, can, I think there's evidence to support this. Yeah. A lot of music is consumed off playlists as, as background music, almost like a kind of a, a, a radio, if you like. Mm. And what it's tending to create is a, is a consumption of music that doesn't delve any deeper. So your, your track gets on a playlist. That playlist is played frequently by people. Your track passes through... People listen to it, consume it, maybe enjoy it, but they don't actually engage with it. They mm -hmm. don't sort of think, oh, I wonder who that interesting mm. female singer is mm. belting out that 
superb number. I must investigate further. Mm. I must go and look on her and website. And you can see that with people that have got, you know, onto quite big playlists, but yet their followers haven't gone up. But that was the point I was going to make. Mm. The, the, two, the two key metrics in, in beyond listeners mm. in Spotify are saves and follows. Mm. And you can, it's so again, there's a little bit more to it in a sense if you want to support a, an independent act and you stream their music, and I'm talking specifically about Spotify here, if you really like the track, then you should save it. Mm. Because that actually sends a message to the Spotify machine learning, which says, oh, this, this track has got value. Mm. Save it to a playlist. Save it to a playlist, yeah. Because you, you save it to one of your own playlists. And actually, one of the things that Spotify looks at is the ratio between uh, plays and saves. Mm. And it's looking for a reasonable ratio of saves to plays. And again, of course, if, if the music is just being consumed by bots or by click farms or by people in the background, it doesn't get saved. Mm. And again, followers are saying it looks at the number of followers you've got and factors that in because followers is you know shows interest to specific well, interest in the artist. It says, I've heard this person's music and I like it enough to follow them. And that's basically, again, you can go out and buy a load of bots to follow you, I suppose, if you want to. But again, come on, people, what's the point? Well, I, I think there's less of that goes on mm. than there is of just mm. purchasing streams or, or trying to promote music, mm. which unfortunately ends up being cycled through, uh, you know, either bots or click farms. Click farms, mm. if you don't know what they are, these are places that are set up in uh, low-wage economies where... Uh, poor sods are basically paid to sit in a room with a bank of mobile phones in front of them, and they just keep pressing play. Yeah. And so please don't support that industry. It's, and it's 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 pretty pretty right. Mm. So I think the message, but the only other message I think I personally put across about streaming is, if you're going to listen to it, the music online, then I would personally prefer people to default to Spotify or Apple. Or Google Play, YouTube, which is where a lot of people mm. consume their music, sure. um, actually delivers probably at the moment anyway the least money to artists. Yeah, absolutely. Of all of them, and you and you can't, you know, people say you know, part of the argument you see on on Facebook and you know, why do people put their music out? Well, you've got no choice. Mm. People, however hard you try, people will consume your music for free, mm. and they have done. Probably ever since I guess the CD. Started. <laughs> well, since tape tape players, used yeah, to, people yeah. used to record it off the radio, didn't they? But since music's gone digital on CDs, it's much easier because you can you can down you can you know rip a CD onto your computer, pass it on to somebody else. That's really when it started. And now with streaming, YouTube, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, you put your whole catalogue on there because you basically have to because you don't want to put barriers in the way of people discovering your music. But you really then want to take people beyond that and into mm. these areas we've talked about, buying the CDs and streaming it through sites that do at least pay a reasonable amount of money. So, yeah, streaming, pick the right platform, follow, save, mm. all that helps. And again, I keep repeating, this applies to everybody else. This isn't just an appeal for us. This is this is what you should do mm. if you're keen to support any independent and artist. And I know, you know, from speaking to a lot of the people that come to the gigs, you know, you go out and you see so many gigs, you guys... You know, which is just unbelievably brilliant. And God Almighty, thank God you do. And we thank you for it. And people are always asking me how they can support us. And this is, you know, this is why it's there. Well, gigs, I mean, we come to that probably last, I, I guess, in the whole uh, scheme of things. Mm. I mean, gigging is an expensive business. And it's mm. an expensive business, particularly for a band like us, where you've got five people involved, plus, plus the single person road crew. And mm. van driver etc um, uh, you know it, it costs quite a bit to, to get out there uh, we're still in a phase where we're trying to grow this so we do a lot of supports so I suppose the first thing is again as we've said before and Rebecca certainly said it at the gigs support, supporting support bands is such an important part so of important it's you know we're only doing those supports because we're trying to reach new people you know we're, that's please give a support band a chance you know, it's an evening of music. You'll only listen. You only have to listen to them from half an hour, really, for the majority of the time. At least give them a couple of songs. You know, a chance. You know, because they're there and they've. It's cost them to be on that stage. They've got to pay people. You know, got to pay their musicians. They got to. You know, they got to 
get themselves there. They got to set up. They might have had to have a day off work. Maybe the next day as well. If you can, you know, go and give them a chance. And that's how a lot of people discover new music. But I do think it's came, again coming up into discussions on social media. Um, you know, people not realising that m- most support bands aren't getting paid. They might be getting a token fee, like fifty quid, mm. but that's a, that's it. And some, indeed, will, may have even paid to be there. Yeah. If you go to a really big gig, and I, I, I mean, it varies so tremendously. Mm. You can't generalise about this. It's dangerous to do so. I wouldn't leave you the impression mm. that you know a particular band is is charging people to be there. But but some big bands certainly will charge mm. for support slots because the the demand is there and and again and also they need the money too. Yeah, they need the you money. You know, they need they... the money. Um and because gigging um even for a larger band unless you're the Rolling Stones uh, <laughs> doesn't actually yield that much money because it's so expensive to do even for really high up bands they might make a loss and the only place they you know make it any money is on the merchandise and from having a couple of bands buy onto the tour to make it viable for them to do the tour so it's not like people are mercenary and going ha 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 give us you know so much money per gig it's just because to be honest there isn't unless you are absolutely massive and I do mean huge, um, the money just isn't there. Well, it's interesting, if you really want to look into this, uh, the, the artist Fish wrote a very, mm. very interesting article on his website. I think you can probably find it on Facebook. And it was really in response to requests that all bands get. We get the same. Uh, why can't you come to, insert name of random town, mm. um, it, it, you know, to gig? And... He deconstructed this uh, on a sort of an international basis because that's how he operates. Mm. I mean, but a lot of what he said would apply to a lot of bands on a national basis. You know, going to a, a, a faraway part of the UK, for, mm. it, it would apply to. And it was really all about the cost of setting up, um, et cetera, et cetera, and how it for him personally, you know, the idea of just rocking up in a European city and doing a gig even though his is a very well supported act, very well established act, um, you know, was, was going to be hopelessly un- uneconomic unless, you know, certain preconditions were met. Mm. Interestingly, in the margins of that statement, he mentioned paying 50 quid for the support band. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. if you want evidence that that's the case, it, it sits in there. But if you're, if you're really interested in the finances of it, that's a great posting if, if you can dig it out. And a very honest one, well done, Fish. Yeah, if I, if I find it, I'll link it on the various promotions of this uh, uh, podcast. Um so we talked about supports. We talked. I mean, people come into gigs. We had a great gig in Wolverhampton on Friday. People came from all over the place, so the South Coast. One Glasgow. of the best nights of my life. It was a. It was absolutely great mm. to see people there. Really keen, and so you know, we know how much much effort people put into this. I think my only other plea around gigs is is, and I know every promoter in the land will want me to say this: is if you're going to go, please buy your tickets early. Yeah, but it, I mean, I, I understand people's you know finances and you know I do I uh, do are a problem but if you possibly can can, yeah if it's viable if you can buy your ticket early at least kind of the bands and the promoters kind of know a rough estimate of who's going although you know you don't tend to get hordes show up on the doors well you'd be surprised I mean it's it's interesting because I was talking to a venue owner last year and she was saying that she put on a gig you know prior to us going there and I can't remember the numbers now mm. but it was a well attended gig it was uh, over 300 people mm. and I think 40% of those bought their tickets in the last week wow. and she, the point she was making as a gig uh, as a venue operator was that she has to try and anticipate numbers not just from the point of view of the economics of it but like sitting on bar staff mm. Mm. so you know how many people does she need in the venue on security on bars staff etc and that all uh, is, is important to the viability of the venue because obviously if she pays for too many and hardly anybody turns up you, you've got losses but also at the other extreme there's nothing worse as any of us know than you can't get a beer because mm. there's only two people on and 300 people have turned up so mm. it, again as it, we're, we're talking all the time here about the ideal and I fully appreciate I'm the same myself with things that I do think yeah okay I could I could commit now but if I if I don't have to commit until next week, at least I know if I'm going. So I understand mm. how busy people are. But I think most venue owners and promoters will tell you that in recent years, 
lastminute.com has become a bigger and bigger issue for them. Yeah, and it's sunk a lot of venues. Well, and it's in, and it, it stresses people, you mm. know, and that's the thing. I mean, it's very difficult when you're hurtling towards a gig. I mean, we've done one this year where I think something like, you know, 35% of the tickets were sold in the last week, even, yeah. even for us. And, and, and it, it just... You know, it gives it, me some sleepless <laughs> nights. <laughs> yes, but as I said, you know, we're we're, we're really talking talking about the ideal. So mm. just to kind of round this off, I mean, as I said right at the outset, and I've said several times in between, this isn't all just about you know us us us. This is a broader issue, really, on which we're hopefully providing some insight. Which is, you know, how exactly do you support an independent act if that's what you choose to mm. do? And we're mm. certainly very grateful for everybody who does it for us and. You know, no criticism intended of of, of, of anybody. Of anybody, it's just these are, these are questions we've been asked, and I hope that what we've talked about in the last half hour or so has given you some insight. Miss mm. Downs, is there anything you would wish to add at this um, point? Just in time? A, a post that I put on today, actually, about um, radio, um, definitely Planet Rock. Um, you can e- email the DJs if you so wish, if you want to hear one of our tracks. A uh, late single or a prior one. There are actually request shows on there, but I'm sure you can email the, you can email the DJs as well if you've uh, been to a gig, would like to hear them play a song. Um, and I know they do listen and respond because people have done that. So that's an, just another way that you can help if you want. Very good point, well made. Uh, mm-hmm. and, but, I mean, it's interesting because despite everything we've said about the way the industry shifted and the importance of streaming, etc., there is still nothing quite like getting good exposure on national radio. And that really does seem to be a place where people uh, will listen and will go and investigate further. Yeah, it's, it's a real music fans it is, yeah. thing to still listen to a radio station. And then to say, well, who is this person and where mm. should I go to find them? And certainly we saw that. The kind of engagement we got from having Hertz playlisted on Planet Rock was... Uh, absolutely superb and we mm. did see a lot of new people sort of joining the fun simply on the basis of, of having heard that so that's yeah very important point again something you can do for any independent artist you support is request their music on radio and that all helps mm. so I think that just about covers the waterfront as they it say does, in business does. terms um, thank you everyone for listening uh, hope you've enjoyed that and found it informative and we will be back uh, in a couple of weeks' time, with a another offering. Uh, that was Ralph sneezing. Yeah, Ralph's obviously had enough. He started mm. sneezing. As usual, we have a merchandise discount code for our online shop. This episode's code is higher. H-I-G-H-E-R in capitals. If you put that in at the relevant point of the checkout process at rebeccadowns.com forward slash shop, you will receive a 5% discount on all items ordered. So it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. This invention's gonna crash and burn. Singing all.